Welcome to the sixth draft site tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be drafting four types of countertops a bathroom vanity, an island, a corner sink, and a European miter. I have draft site already open, so let's begin drawing. The first drawing we will do is a bathroom vanity. The vanity I want to draw is 55 inches by 22.5. So I'm going to start a rectangle here. I'm going to use relative Cartesian coordinates to draw my countertop. So I will make it 55 wide, comma. 22.5. My countertop has been drawn. Let me move the window a little bit. Next, I need to place my sink. My sink is an ellipse, but first I'm going to draw a construction line. I want my sink to be four inches from this edge of the countertop. So I'm going to start a line here at the midpoint. I'm going to use polar to indicate the direction and then enter the length manually. Four, enter. A line four units was drawn. I'm going to hit enter to exit out of the command. Now I'm not going to try and draw my sink in place. I'm going to draw it outside of my countertop and move it in. It's a little bit easier, so I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to start my ellipse here. Then I'm going to use polar to indicate the direction. Then I'm going to type in the width of my sink, which is 16 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to type in 16 dash 7 slash 8, enter. Now I need to indicate my other axis. Now I'm going to have to indicate the radius, not necessarily the entire length. It's 16 and 7 eighths by 14. I need to divide 14 by 2 since I'll be measuring out from the middle. So that will be 7. And I've indicated my angle with polar, so I can hit enter. And there's my sink. Now I need to move my sink from here and put it in place. To do that, I'm going to select it. I'm going to use the move tool. I'm going to grab onto a quadrant point. The quadrant point is either the north, south, east, or west point on a circle or an ellipse. So I'm going to type in QUA to use quadrant snapping exclusively. I'm going to select the bottom quadrant. Now I've grabbed on to my sink. I can now place it directly onto the end point of this line. So now my sink is directly in the middle and the bottom edge of it is exactly four inches away from the edge of the countertop. So I can delete this construction line and we can move on to the faucet holes. Before I can draw the faucet holes themselves, I need to draw a construction line so that my faucet holes are exactly 2.5 inches over the top quadrant of this ellipse. So I'm going to get the line tool. I'm going to type in QUA because I need to snap onto a quadrant point again. I'm going to snap onto the top quadrant. And then I'm going to use polar to set my angle and type in 2.5 inches and hit enter. I can hit enter again to finish my lines. So now I have a point exactly 2.5 inches above my ellipse, right where my, the center of my circle needs to be. So I'm going to start a circle. I'm going to specify this as my center point. Then I'm going to type in D, because I want to type in the diameter. The diameter is 1-3-8, 1 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to hit enter. And my first faucet hole has been drawn. Now I want to draw a faucet hole to the right 4 inches and to the left 4 inches. I can delete this construction line. To draw the other two faucet holes, I'm going to use the copy command. So first I'm going to select my faucet hole. Then I'm going to select the copy command. I'm going to specify the from point as the center. And then the second point, which is where I'm going to place my faucet hole, I'm going to specify using relative Cartesian coordinates. So I'm using ampersand. I would like to go to the right, so I'd like to move right on the x-axis, four units, and zero on the y. The first faucet hole is drawn. Now I'd like to do the same thing, but to the left. So I'm going to use relative Cartesian coordinates and negative four to move to the left on the x-axis, comma, zero. Now let's zoom out. I'll double tap with the mouse wheel, and I'll zoom out a little bit more. Now we can see that the sink has been drawn. I don't need to mirror this because it is completely symmetrical, so I'm going to scale it, and then it'll be ready to send to CAM. So I've selected it all, then I'm going to select the scale command, and my base point, I'll just use this corner here, and the scale factor is 25.4, which will convert it to millimeters, which is what our CAD program wants. Now I'm going to double tap one more time with the mouse wheel, zoom out a little bit more, and you can see that the sink remains the same shape, everything's right, so I can file save as, making sure that it's on the 2007-2009 ASCII drawing DXF file, and then I can type in the file name, vanity, and I'm going to save it to documents, my drawings, save. Now I'm ready to go to CAM and open this file. So this drawing's finished, I can go to file, new, and we can move on to the next drawing.
The next thing we're going to create is a corner countertop with a corner sink, somewhat similar to the one in this picture. Our countertop is 60 in this measurement, and this measurement is also 60. To start out, we're going to lay out the existing cabinetry and then draw the countertop on top of it. This will help us to get this angle here. So I'm going to go back to draft site, I'm going to start a rectangle, and this will be 60, comma 24.5 the size of the cabinetry and then I'll draw the next cabinet on this side going down so that will be 24.5 and since we need to go down on the y-axis it'll be negative 60 and now a portion of our countertop has been laid out now I've taken a measurement and from this corner to the beginning of the 45 degree angle is exactly 24.5 inches so I'm going to start a line here and I'm going to draw a construction line 24.5 inches up now I've measured from this corner over, and it is also 24.5 inches. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to draw out 24.5, and hit enter. Now I'll continue my line and connect it to the other one, the end point over here. Now that we have the cabinetry laid out, we can clean up using the trim tool. I'm going to select the trim tool, I'm going to select some of the cutting edges I'd like to use, and then now I'll hit enter and begin trimming. Now I'll hit escape to exit out of the trim tool, and now that we have the cabinetry drawn, we can work on the countertop. Now what's left to draw is the overhang, the inch and a half overhang. So I'm going to draw that using the offset tool. I'm going to click on the offset tool. First I need to specify my distance, which we want an inch and a half overhang, so that'll be 1.5. Next I need to select the source entity. I'd like to create an offset of this entity. So now I'll select the side for the offset and move on to the next one, and the last one. So now that we've finished the offsets, we can connect these lines and clean it up a little. So I'll exit out of the offset tool, I'll grab the line tool, I will connect this to the rest of the countertop, and do that again on the bottom. Now I'll use the trim tool to clean up the drawing. So I'm going to select all of these as cutting edges, and zoom in and begin trimming. So now that I've finished with the trimming, I will delete these construction lines. And there we are. We have our countertop laid out. Now that the countertop is laid out, we can import a sink cutout. For that, I'm going to open up a sink cutout that I've downloaded. The first step will be finding out the layer that our cutout is on. So go to Inquiry, Get Properties. I'm going to select this layer. Hit Enter. It is on the curve layer. So I'll close this. I'll now go to Format, Layer. I'm going to find the curve layer. Right click, activate it. Now I'm going to select Specify All But Active, and then I'm going to turn all of those off by selecting the green dot. Then I'm going to hit OK. Now our drawing has been significantly cleaned up. Now all I need to do is select the entities that I need to copy. OK, now that I've selected them, I will right click, hit Copy, and then I'll return to our drawing. And I'm going to paste them as a block. And I'm going to put it here while I manipulate it a little to get it into the right spot. Before I place the sink, I'm going to draw a construction line. I would like the sink to be centered four inches in from the midpoint of this line. So I'm going to start my line. I'm going to hit four, enter. So now I have a four inch line coming out. All I need to do is rotate this. I'll select it and I'll select the rotate command. So now I need to specify the pivot point. I'll specify here and the rotation angle. 45. Now I can select the sink, and I'm going to move it based off of its midpoint, and I'm going to place it at the end of this construction line. There we go, now the sink is perfectly in place, and I can delete this construction line. The next thing is to place the faucet hole. Now the faucet hole should be placed at the center of this radius. So first I'm going to need to explode this entity highlighted it. I'll click explode. Now I can see the center of this radius, which is right there. I'll get my circle tool. I'll snap on to the midpoint of this arc, and that will change to diameter by typing D, and the diameter is 1 and 3 eighths. And my faucet hole has been drawn. Now I can zoom out and mirror this countertop. 
So I'll select it. And then I will select the mirror tool. I'll make my mirror line here. Using polar, it will be perfectly straight up and down. Now I'm asked if I'd like to delete the source entity. Yes. Now all that is left is to scale it. So I'll select it, scale. I'll use this as the base point. And the scale factor is 25.4. And I'll double tap with the wheel. And here we go. Our countertop is ready to be sent to CAM. So now we can start a new file and move on to the next drawing. In this file, we will be drawing an 84 by 48 inch rounded island. Here's a picture of a similar countertop. In our island, this distance is 38 inches, and the distance from here to the very tip of the rounded edge is 48 inches. So, I'll return to our drawing. We'll start a rectangle that is 84 by 48 inches. So that'll be ampersand. 84 comma 48. I'm going to double tap with the mouse wheel to center in on it. Next, I'm going to draw another rectangle for a construction line that will be 84 by 38. This will help us as we draw the arc. So I'm going to do ampersand 84 comma 38. Enter. So this line is now 10 inches from this line. And now I can draw the arc. I'm going to go to draw arc three points. Now I'll select my first point as this corner, the second point as this midpoint, and the last point here as the other corner. Now I can clean up with the trim command. I'll select all of the entities just to make things a little quicker. Then I will start deleting them. escape to exile the trim command and there we go we have our rounded island now if we wanted to we could add a fillet to this corner to make it rounded but first we would have to explode this rectangle fillets cannot be placed on unexploded rectangles so now I've exploded it now I'll grab the fillet tool I will type in R so I can specify the radius I'll make it a radius of 4 hit enter select my first entity and my second entity now I can zoom in here. As you can see, there's one of the leftover construction lines, which I can delete. And, and I'll zoom out, and there we go. We have a filleted corner. Now let me use the undo to go back a few steps here. Now let's take a look at one last island example. Let me go to this picture. Let's say that we wanted to draw our island similar to this one where the cabinetry was built based on a radius, and we want our countertop to match that radius. So I'll go back to our drawing. First, I'll draw out the radius of the cabinetry. Let's say that it's a 96 inch radius. Start a line here, and I will go down 96. I'll double tap to zoom out. And then I'll draw a circle to represent the cabinetry. So I'll start here at the center point and end here. So this area here represents the cabinetry. Now we would like to draw the countertop, which let's say that it needs to have a 10 inch overhang. So I'll click on the offset tool. I'll specify the distance with like a 10 inch overhang. So I'll type in 10, specify the source entity. Then I will specify the side for destination. And there we go. Our offset was created and now we can clean up. Okay, I finished cleaning up. We now have a rounded countertop. Uh, this countertop shares the same center point as the cabinetry and has a 10 inch overhang. So now that this is finished, we can start a new file and move on to the European miter. Before we begin drawing a European miter, let's take a look at one. Here we have an example of European miter. There are a few benefits to the European miter. For example, the profile tools are able to run past on both sides. And the European miter saves materials compared to the traditional 45 degree miter. And since it has a shorter cutting length, it saves on tooling. Here's an example of a finished European miter. Now let's go back to draft site and begin to draw one. First, we're going to draw a countertop. So I'll draw one um, 24 wide by 60. Double tap. I'll draw the other side. I will make it 60 by negative 24. Now we can use the trim tool to clean up. Select them, click Trim, I'll delete these lines, 
escape out of the trim command. Now I will draw the 45 degree angle, which will be the start of our European miter. Next I'm going to draw up 4 inches. This is just an arbitrary amount. Then I'm going to draw past on the left. I'm using polar to make sure that my lines are straight. Now I can create a radius. I'll come over here and execute the radius command. Now I'm going to enter the R option. Now this is a very important step. You're going to be cutting an inside corner. So you need to make sure that your radius isn't smaller than your tooling. So I know that 1.75 is a safe radius for my tooling. So now I will select my first entity and my second entity. Okay, now if I zoom in, our radius was made. Now I can use a trim tool to clean up my drawing. Now I need to separate my two pieces. So to do that, I will select this top section. I'll do Control C. I'm going to do Control V to paste it, and I'll place it over here. And now I can delete some of these entities. This section actually belongs to this rectangle, so all that will need to be trimmed. Select the Trim Tool, my cutting edges, and I can trim it. And I'll delete this piece. But this piece here also needs to be removed. So I will zoom in, select it, I'll select the Trim Tool, and I will delete it. Now I can place these pieces near each other so that we can see the European miter. Remove that on over and we can zoom in. As you can see these two pieces fit together like a puzzle. When they're cut out with the CNC machine they'll be made to fit perfectly together. This will conclude the tutorial.